Kleiman from Riverside Reptiles Education Center. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like and subscribe at the end of this video. Um, so today, I'm very excited to share with you uh, turtle shell anatomy. I often get a lot of questions asked, you know, what are the different parts of a turtle or a tortoise's shell? Um, so we're going to talk about that today. And uh, I have with me right here, Clyde who's going to help us out today. So Clyde is a 25-year-old uh, Gulf Coast box turtle, which is a subspecies of the Eastern box turtle. And, um, and I've had Clyde for pretty much all of his life. Uh, he's an adult male uh, box turtle. So turtles basically have two parts to their shell. This big top part right here, this is called the carapace. The bottom part right here, Clyde's going to wave at me when I do this, this is called the plastron. Here's the plastron and the waving turtle. Now on each side of the shell, right here, this is called the bridge. So that's where the carapace and the plastron connect, right here at the bridge of the shell. So if we're looking at the carapace right here, all turtle shells are covered with scutes. And scutes are made out of keratin, very similar, actually exactly the same thing as our fingernails and for those of you lucky enough to have hair. And of course, Clyde is peeing on the table right now. Yeah. Thanks, Clyde. That's a great shot. So, getting back to the carapace right here, we're gonna put Clyde away for a little bit, <laughs> let him finish his, his business in there. But I have, a, I have a, a carapace right here that's not gonna pee on the table. This is from a common snapping turtle. So, unfortunately, this turtle was probably ended up in turtle soup. This is actually a very old uh, carapace that was given to me by a uh, retiring biology teacher. This carapace is probably older than me, actually. So the carapace is made up of scoops. So each one of these shapes right here is a scoop. And there's actually 13 of them. And they all have you know different names. So the scoops right here, going down the middle part, these are called the vertebrals. These are the vertebral scoots, and there are five of those. Uh, and on the sides right here, these are the plural scoots. So there are one, two, three, four, four plural scoots on each side. All right, well, I have another really interesting carapace here with me. Um, this one is actually from a hawksbill sea turtle. And again, this turtle was probably killed for its meat a um, long time ago, actually not too long ago, um, back in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, even way before that, these guys were harvested for their meat and especially um, their gorgeous carapace right here. And this is where the name um, tortoise shell comes from, this pattern right here. Uh, they were harvested, again, for their meat and also to make um, eyeglass frames, combs, little trinkets and jewelry out of their shell. Unfortunately, uh, I think there was about 20 million uh, of these turtles were harvested uh, from the late 1800s all the way up until uh, the mid 80s. Uh, and there's only about 20,000 uh, females, nesting females left, unfortunately. Uh, and, but I was lucky enough to obtain the shell for educational purposes. And you can see, again, here are the vertebrals, there's five of them, one, two, three, four, five, and then the plurals right on the side, four of those. Now, these scoots on the sides right here, these are called marginals. So these are their marginal scoots. Um, right up here, right behind the head, this is the neutral scoot right here. So we have a bunch of marginal scoots, and typically there are 28 marginal scoots. Now there's always exceptions to the rule. Sometimes turtles and tortoises are born uh, with uh, divided scoots, so sometimes there's more uh, than 13, but the general rule, 13 of these scoots, 28 of the marginals. All right, we're gonna bring the peeing turtle back. Um, hopefully he's done, but you never know. Turtles hold a lot of water. So we talked about the carapace. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the plastron. Uh, so the plastron, you can see it's divided into sections right here. 
So this right here, this, these two plates right here, these are called the gular plates. The gular plates are right underneath his cute chin right here. Right here, these are the humeral plates. Right across his chest are the pectoral plates. Right here are the abdominal plates. Right where his legs are, these are called the femoral plates. And right underneath this cute little bum right here, these are called the anal plates. So thou, those are the specific names of the plates on the turtle's plastron. Now a very neat thing about box turtles like Clyde here, especially on his plastron, you can see there's a line right here. So some turtles like box turtles um, and certain species of mud turtles evolved a hinge on their plastron and it's controlled by muscles underneath their bridge right here. So you can see that this is flexible. If I turn him on the side, it sounds like he's listening to some good beats right there. So what these guys can do if they feel threatened by a predator, although Clyde's probably not going to do it because Clyde's so used to people, these guys can pull themselves inside their shell and they can seal it up tight. They can pull their legs in, they pull their heads in, they can even pull their back end in, tuck their cute little tail in, and seal themselves up tight inside of their shell. So some species of turtles, again like box turtles and mud turtles, they evolved very special plastrons to help protect them from their predators. I like turtles. I like turtles. And another neat thing you can see about Clyde, which is very cool about uh, box turtles and some other species of turtles, is that they are sexually dimorphic. That means you can tell males and females just by looking at them. And the way you do it with box turtles is that if you look at Clyde's eyes, he's got bright red eyes. So male box turtles typically have bright red eyes, while the females typically have um, kind of browned or dark brown eyes. Again, there's always exceptions to the rule. I've seen box turtles out there that have actually white eyes, which is really cool. Um, but for the majority, adult box turtles, males red eyes, females brown eyes. So we discussed on what's on top of a turtle's shell. Uh, the scoots made out of keratin, which grow on top of the bone right here. So this is a full carapace and plastron. Uh, it's either from, this was found in Florida by a friend of mine, it's either fl from uh, a Florida red belly turtle or a peninsula cooter, which are both very common large freshwater turtles in Florida. If you think you know what species this is, I would love to hear from you. Please uh, post it in the comments below. I'll give you some good looks at all different angles. My guess, I think it's a Florida red belly. Um, but then again, I, I'm not an expert on either of the species. So here are some different angles. So you can see the carapace right here is made up of a lot of smaller bones. And on top, is where the scoots grow. And I loosened one up. Hold on. I'm going to take out a trusty knife. And you can, it's for educational purposes, I'm going to pull this off. Here you go. And here's a piece of uh, one of the marginals right here. So you can see it's very similar exactly to our fingernails. And again, you can see the bottom, the bottom plates of the plaster. So if you're looking at this shell, you might wonder, you know, a lot of this wear and tear on top of here. You can see like some green algae. So this uh, turtle died, obviously, uh, in the woods. All the flesh and meat uh, went back into the earth. It was consumed by other animals and insects and bacteria. Uh, the bone, since it's made out of mostly uh, calcium, which is a very hard mineral, takes a lot longer to de decompose. But animals still will chew at it. So you can see there's lots of little tiny holes you can see some teeth marks right here. This is probably from a rodent. Uh, so bone is a very uh, good source of calcium for other animals. And in fact, not to get too far off topic, but there's a porcupine den near where I live. And I often take my kids to visit it because it's pretty cool to go and collect quills. But quite often outside this porcupine den, um, there's a lot of scattered bones with big gnaw marks out of it. And you know, if you didn't know there was a porcupine in there, you might think there's some evil beast in there that's eating people because there's all these bones scattered around. Uh, but they're 
mostly deer bones, and so rodents, especially rodents, will chew on bones to, uh, to get their calcium intake. So you can see right here, especially right here, there's some little chew marks from a mouse. Um, there's some other bites and nibbles on the shell, um, all most likely from rodents. So I brought another little turtle shell, which is very cute. So turtles come in all different sizes, you know, uh, ranges from little tiny common musk turtles, also known as stink pot turtles, which are sometimes considered one of the small species of turtle in the world, all the way to the Galapagos tortoises, which get over 600 pounds, to leatherback sea turtles, which are considered the largest species of living turtle. They can get five and a half feet carapace and weigh upwards of 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. But this is a little uh, stink pot or common musk turtle, which is found here in Connecticut. This was actually an animal that was surrendered to me uh, back in the early 90s. And he, uh, he lived, he was an adult when I got him, so it was hard to tell how old he was, but he stayed with me for over 20 years. Um, so when he passed away, we used his carapace as shell for educational purposes, but he is an adult male common musk turtle. This is as big as they get. But it doesn't matter how big or small the turtle is, they all share pretty much the same number of scoots. You can see he's got the five vertebrals, and then he's got the four plurals, and the 28 marginals on the side. The same thing right here in a blastron. All right, so <clears throat> I always like saying there's exceptions to the rule, because there always are. Um, and you might be asking yourself, what the heck is this thing? It looks like a, a pancake with legs. So this is a soft-shelled turtle. Now, there are many species of soft-shelled turtles. Most are found in freshwater, although some can be found in uh, brackish water as well. And they are some of the largest freshwater species of turtles. There are some uh, Asian species, like the Yangtze uh, soft-shelled turtle, which can get over 200 pounds. They are huge. Uh, here in North America, there are several species, including this one. This is a spiny soft shell, and this is an adult male. His name is Steven, and Steven's about 22 years old. Now, a thing you might notice right away is that they don't have any scoots. So these guys, of course, and Steven's peeing on the table, of course. That's a, that's a recurring theme on this, on this uh, video. But you can see that they have no keratinized scoots. It's just kind of soft skin, uh, hence the name soft shell turtle. They do, however, have a bony plate right here, which doesn't encompass the entire shell. So you can see very flexible right here on the sides. But if you're taking an x-ray of his body, right here in the middle, you can kind of see, you almost see his ribs right here. So right here, this, he's got a hard plate and then the skin extends over and allows for some flexibility right here. Same thing on his plastron. He doesn't have any of the keratinized plates. Um, he does have hard bone underneath here, which does protect him. But you can see right here, it's a pretty much a soft. He does, they might have some kind of floating bone in some parts of their shell, but mostly it's just right here. I know Steven, he's not, soft shell turtles do not like to be out of the water. That's where they feel safe. Um, Steven, he's one of those rare soft shell turtles that doesn't try to take your finger off when you take him out. So far, he's been very cooperative. A lot of soft shell turtles, when they take him out of water, they uh, like to bite because again, the water is their safety. So they feel very um, threatened. Oh, there he goes, see, I told you. Typically, they try to bite when you take him out of the water. And Steven, he's telling you right there that he's a boy. <laughs> yep, that is a turtle's penis. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> All right, so back to their shell. So why do they not have these keratinized scoots on their shell? These guys sacrifice protection uh, to adapt to speed. So they don't have these heavy scoots on the back of their shell. Uh, which makes them a lot lighter. So these guys are built for speed in the water. These guys are extremely fast. Uh, also this flexible shell allows them to uh, burrow into the sand and that's where they sit a lot of time in these moving, fast moving rivers 
Um, sometimes you'll find them in lakes. They'll bury themselves in the sand. And you can see they have a very long neck. They'll stick their necks out, get a breath of air, and then continue to hide and wait for prey. These guys are phenomenal ambush predators. Another neat thing about soft-shelled turtles is that they can actually breathe underwater. So what they'll do is, if you see a soft-shelled turtle underwater, uh, especially in an aquarium setting, so you can see their mouth, they kind of open their mouth up a little bit, kind of like a, a fish breathes underwater. So in the linings of their mouth, they have a lot of rich blood vessels that can absorb oxygen uh, through the water, much like fish gills. So these guys can stay underwater for a very long time. All right. Well, our last turtle is green. Green is an alligator snapping turtle. And she, I think she's in her 30s. Um, she's a pretty old turtle, although alligator snapping turtles can live well uh, beyond 50 years, sometimes even older. Uh, she is a rather large turtle, although alligator snapping turtles even get bigger than this. The males actually get much larger than the females. Uh, the record male alligator snapping turtle was well over 200 pounds. Uh, again, one of the largest uh, freshwater turtles in the world, uh, along with the, uh, some of the Asian species of soft shell turtles. So it's hard to handle her, um, but if you look here on her back, we'll do some close-ups in a little bit, you'll see that she does have those 13 scoots and those 28 marginals. Now on the bottom uh, of the plastron, they have all the same plates as well. Now, a neat thing about alligator snapping turtles, and we do this very carefully. Let's see. Oh, there we go. See, she's opening her mouth. I know you want to give me a kiss. Inside her mouth, that pink thing, that's actually their glottis. That's how they breathe. But below that, there's a little fleshy appendage on the tip of her tongue which they actually wiggle around like a worm. So these guys sit on slow moving bodies of water. Um, sometimes, actually, sometimes they're actually found in fast moving bodies of water. Um, and they sit very still and they open up their mouths really, really wide and wiggle that little worm appendage on their tongue. They get uh, fish to come into their mouth and then they snap it shut. Now these guys don't always just eat fish. They don't rely on their tongue lure, which is actually called lingual luring. They uh, often forage on freshwater mussels. They'll eat crayfish, they'll eat other turtles. They pretty much, they're opportunistic, so they'll eat anything that they can uh, catch and overpower. Uh, they also eat vegetation. A lot of people don't know that, but snapping turtles uh, eat a lot of uh, vegetation uh, that grows in the water as well. But you can get a good look. <laughs> our plastron right there, if I'm still in frame. She's heavy. She's about 35 pounds. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I will get back to you. Um, thanks again. I hope you learned a lot about turtles. And until next time, I'm Brian from Riverside Reptiles Education Center.